Say Mount Calvary Baptist Church family and friends. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Lady Rose from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. We are so happy to see that you have joined us on this day. We'll start off with a selection from our Minister of Music, Brother Dwight Ross and friends. and friends for that selection. We will now hear a word from Pastor Rose. Thank you, Lady Rose. The scripture uh, today will be from Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Once again, Matthew 22, 34 through 40. And I also be referenced Exodus 20. And it reads as follows. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. My topic today is what the world is missing. What the world is missing. Have you ever tasted something and you said to yourself, something is missing? Have you ever seen something and made the statement, something is missing? Have you ever been somewhere, you looked around and you noticed uh, your surroundings and said something is missing? And we made that statement, we said something was missing because something was just not quite right. Something was off, something was not lined up. And it was noticeable that something was missing. If you look around at this world today and all that's going on, it can easily be noticed that something is missing. The way people treat each other, the disrespect amongst a fellow man, the actions that are being taken, the corruptness all over, the lack of compassion and care for a fellow man, and bickering on social media. In this earth that we live on, we can truly say that something is missing. Now let me take you to Exodus in chapter 20 as I combine this with the scripture that was just read. God spoke to the Israelites and gave them the commandments. He gave them the law. And specifically in this chapter, God gave them the Ten Commandments for them to follow, which was a covenant agreement. This covenant was conditional based upon their obedience, but we also come to find out that it was temporary. Now, these laws were not developed at Mount Sinai. However, God speaks them. But they were already written in the heart of man since Adam. In the heart of man's conscience, they know, we know that it's not right to steal, it's not right to murder. So God here speaks these commandments to the people. Now, of course, with Jesus' resurrection and new covenant established with his blood, we are not under the law, but rather under grace. However, these laws still apply to the upright behavior that is expected of us all. So here in Matthew 22, here the Pharisees plotted and tried to trick Jesus by asking him which is the greatest commandment. And here they were probably hoping that he would fail to recognize all the important parts of the law. But as we see here in verse 37 through 40, Jesus says this, he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. Jesus did not have to list all of the laws, but show them how these two commandments cover all of the laws. And Jesus starts off with the first and great commandment. And we're going to go back to it why he stated it was the first and great commandment. But he starts off with, he says, you shall love the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind. Now, one of the reasons this is the first and great commandment is because without God, nothing successful can follow. Order will be lost. We can see this in the world that we're living in. That order is being lost and that is because something is missing and that something is God first. So Jesus makes this statement first because of the order it must be in and because of the importance of it. Also, the first four of the Ten Commandments in Exodus addresses the relationship with God. And this verse that Jesus stated covers the first four of those commandments. You see, I'll show you how. You see, if I love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind, then I won't have any other gods before me. Before God stated this to the Israelites, he reminded the Israelites what he had done for them and only he could have done it. When God told them this commandment, with all that God had done for them, this should have been automatic. This commandment is stating that God is above all and God is our all in all. So there should be nothing in our lives besides God or in addition to God that is recognized as God. And we find in this world that we're living in that so many people are putting so many things before God rather than our true God. So God goes on to say in the second commandment about idolatry. And that there should be nothing made that we worship and nothing made that represents our true God. Because there's nothing that can be made that will do God any justice. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth and place no weight at all on other things. You see, we are a people that likes to see things in the physical. And that's why we have such an issue with faith. Uh, but, but that's why many people worship these false gods. 
and idols because they want to see what they're worshiping. But we as Christians have faith and we may not be able to physically see God, but I'm sure many of us have felt God. I don't know about you, but I felt God. I, I've experienced God. I, I felt God in my bones. I, I felt him residing within me and I didn't need to see him because I know that he's always there. Oh, come on, somebody. You need to stay with me. So again, Jesus stated that we should love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. Again, covering the first four commandments. In which the third states that we should not use the name of our Lord God in vain. Now, let me go here. How many of us know that there is power in the name of Jesus? There is. Power to heal, power to change, power to turn around. This is power. As a matter of fact, if you can breathe right now and listen to this word, whether you want to admit it or not or felt it or not, it is only because of Jesus' power. Isn't that something that God loves and provides even when you may be in denial? <laughs> But listen, there is power in God. So when we use God's name, when we call out Jesus' name in profanity, now I'm sure you heard it, that's use it in vain. Or watch this, when we call out the name even in a playful manner, you know how we say, sweet Jesus, the Lord of Lord, or we say, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. You know, we've used it in vain. His name must be uh, revered in all ways. And many of us are guilty of doing this and not even realizing it. Matter of fact, watch this. You know, if you go to someone and say, God told me to tell you, and you know doggone well God didn't tell you to tell them, but you just wanted to use it because you know it holds more weight than your word, that's using God's name in vain. You see, if I love him with all my heart, all my mind, and all my soul, I will not do that, but rather honor his name and lift up his name and magnify his name and glorify his name and tell everyone I know about his name. So God went on in Exodus 20, verse 10 and 11. This is always a little controversial for many. Telling the people to remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy, to not do anything on that day, but to keep it as the Lord's day. Now, as many of us know, God made the heavens and earth in six days, but rested on the seventh. Now, under the new covenant, we, there is no obligation to observe the Sabbath. Colossians 2, 16 and 17 says this, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Now, let me say this to you. Churches have split. Arguments have gone on about this, and we need to understand that's exactly what the enemy wants. The enemy wants to distract us any way possible from bringing people into the kingdom of God. And God would not want us to sit around and argue about, you know, about these things when there are lost souls out there that need to be saved. You know, we most definitely must set a day apart for rest and to worship our God. But every day should be holy because that's what we have been called to be and called to do. So whether you set your day aside on Sunday or whether you set it on a Saturday, we all should be giving him the glory and honor and sharing with all people. So Jesus stated that this commandment of loving God with all your heart, soul and mind is the first and great commandment. Again, without God, success will not be followed and or maintained. Order will not be maintained and we see that in this world that we are living in today and we see that God is missing. But Jesus also knew that this was the first and great commandment, but to act upon the second one he gave, we must first be able to follow the first one, which is to love God. Jesus said the second commandment was, love thy neighbor as thyself. I want you to see something here. You see, we are unable to love the right way if we not, have not been taught by God how to love. And this second commandment will always be a struggle for those who do not love the Lord. God must teach us how to love. And he's the only one who can do it effectively because God is love. You know, 1 John 4, 19 through 21 says this, We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he's seen cannot love God for whom he's not seen. And this commandment, 
we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is why the first commandment is the first and greatest and why we need it to do the second commandment of loving thy neighbor. And this verse of loving thy neighbor covers the last six commandments that we find in Exodus 20. Now, I want you to see, our neighbor is anybody but our own self. It is anybody. It could be a brother, sister, mother, father. It could be the, your real neighbor or it, it could be anyone. Any, uh, your neighbor could be anybody but ourself. So God starts off by saying, he says, honor thy father and thy mother. And, and what that means is to prize. We ought to care for them. We ought to respect them. We ought to love them. And, and watch this. And we are not to come up with excuses as why we can't love them. You know, we're so good at that. Oh, well, they didn't do that. Uh, they weren't responsible parents or they weren't there or they left him or they, they did this or that. You know, God says we ought to love everybody. We're so good for coming up reasons why we can't love somebody and, and, and why we shouldn't love them or whatever it may be. But, but you know what? God could do that for us. God could say, oh, I'm not going to love you for what, because of what you did two hours ago. I'm not going to love you because of what you did last night. I'm not going to love you for what you did the other day. Come on. So, but God doesn't do that. And we ought to uh, model ourselves off of God, off of Jesus. And we, and we know that we are to love everybody. So look here. If we love thy neighbor as thyself, let's cover some of the commandments. We will not kill. We will not steal. And we will not bear false witness against them. Love does not kill. Love does not take away from somebody something that's not ours. And love does not lie or tell and spread lies about someone. You see, when we do these things, when we kill, when we steal, when we lie on others, we are allowing the enemy to take control of us. Because that's exactly what Satan is all about. Revelation 12 and 9 says, Satan is called a deceiver. And that's what he does. And in this world, many of us have been so deceived. And this happens because the world is missing God. So now let me go back to uh, what the seventh commandment states. It says, if we, and it says, if, I want you to understand, if we love our neighbor as thyself, we will not, watch this, commit adultery. We will not step out on the one whom we are married to and have a covenant with. And we have that covenant with God. Also, watch this. Also, if I love thy neighbor, we will not entice someone else's spouse. And it goes further than that. You know, Jesus stated in Matthew 5, 27 through 28, he says, you have heard that it was said that you should not commit adultery. But he said, let me take it a little deeper in verse 28. He said, but I say to you that anyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in his heart. You see, if I love my neighbor and I love God, I will not put myself or anyone else in a situation that will create this adultery temptation. Now, that's a whole nother sermon. I can go on forever, but I'm not going to. But I want you to understand in this world that we live in, it is full of this type of temptation. And people have no regard for the institution of marriage. And this happens because the world is missing God. Let's look at David and Joseph with two different examples. You see, David had that temptation. And what did he do? He gave in to it. Look at Joseph. Joseph, uh, part of Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph, and Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph. Joseph, what did he do? He shook himself off. He left his coat and said, listen, woman, you can have that coat. And he ran. He ran away. And Joseph understood, I cannot put myself in a situation where the temptation is there. I got to get out of there. And the same thing with us. So let me move on. If I love thy neighbor as thyself, I will not covet what he or she has. Oh, gosh, this is a tough one for all of us. If I love that neighbor as thyself, I will not covet what he or she has. Covet is a desire to want something someone else has. And this is something that we must guide our, our, you know, guard our hearts on because covetous will cause us to disobey many of the other commandments listed. Uh, let's go back to the story of David. What did David do? David covered Uriah's wife. It led to him then to steal the wife. He later lied to Uriah, and then we know that he had him murdered. Covetness just starts a domino effect. And covetness is a major problem in this world that we are living in. Nations are covet other nations. Major companies cover, covet other companies. Employees covet other employees. Even family members covet 
other family members. This covetousness is something that is out of control. Uh, it really is. And, 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 and God is what the world is missing. This world is missing the love of God. And because they are missing the love of God, this world does not understand how to love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. As thyself means we ought to love the way we want to be loved and how we want to specifically be treated ourselves. But we don't find this in this world, but yet the opposite. Because this world is missing God. It is missing love. You know, Dionne Warwick sang a song and it went like this. It says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It is, only, it is the only thing that there is just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. Love is what the world needs. God is what the world needs. For there is no love without God. And the only way that we can ensure that this love gets out is if we go and spread the good news to everyone that we know. This is not a time to sit on the gospel of Jesus, but rather spread it to all as we have all been charged to. But let me say this to you. It first starts with us. We ought to love our neighbor. We ought to love our enemies. We ought to love those who get on our nerves. We ought to love those who aren't so lovable. Because if we're not loving and we call ourselves Christians, well, what example are we? We are supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be different. We are supposed to act different. And when people see us still loving those who are coming at us, they'll ask, how in the world can you love someone like that? And that will open the door and you can let them know, I can love someone like that because I love God and God loves me. And because of that, I'm able to love. We have to give this world love. The world is missing God. The world is missing love. The question is, will you give it to them? God bless you. We thank you so much for joining with us today. We want to offer the opportunity for someone to give their life to Christ. You know, if you have never accepted Christ in your life, then right now you are unsaved, which means that when you leave this place, you're not going to heaven. You won't be able to see God. And all you have to do is admit that you have, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we all have. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and confess him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you would like to do that today, and all you have to do is repeat after me the sinner's prayer. And I want you to understand that this gift that God has given you, it's a free gift. You don't have to do anything to earn it. God says, I'll give it to you. Matter of fact, as messed up and jacked up as we may be, we still come to Christ. God said, come as you are and he will accept you. And don't wait to, for you to change yourself. You can't do that. You need God to change. So if you would like to be saved, you want Jesus to come into your heart, just repeat after me. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner and I have come short of the glory of God. God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I'm confessing him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right now. Lord, come into my heart, come into my mind, and come into my soul, and take over. Amen. God bless you. And if you have said that, you are now saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. We would now like to encourage our members of Mount Calvary to send in their tithes and their offerings. And if you would like to support us in giving, please go to our website at www.mcbcmh.org and click the donate tab. You will also find on our website our weekly schedule. We would like to hear from you. Maybe you're interested in membership or just a prayer request. You can email us at mountcalvarymh at yahoo.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our website. We hope you have been blessed. God bless. Thank you.